Hiya folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and this week is March 10th, which means it's Mar 10, which means it's Mario Day, which means it's time to make a Mario. But I don't want to just make any old Mario, I want to make the gritty, realistic Mario version that Hollywood is too scared to make, uh, except for that one time. Anyways, in order to make a realistic Mario, I need a good body double, which is where Thor, God of Thunder, comes into play. A couple cuts here and there, and I've got the perfect body upon which to build my post-apocalyptic Italian plumber. I figured Thor's got the exact sort of a body I would expect of a realistic Mario, though perhaps with a bit more nip on display than I intend to have, so once I've got the armature cut to size, I can mount it on my block of wood and begin the bulking of the belly. Thorio, of course, needs an appropriately rotund midsection, so I'll make sure to really thicken that up as well as get some extra padding on the legs, chest, and arms before moving on to the inclaying process, which is really just smooshing big blobs of red clay over the top half of his body until I've got all the metal shiny bits covered in a nice red clay top coat. I'll then smooth the seams and sections together to give me a nice smooth Santa belly into the shoulders of which I can press a big divot for a future head, and of course, since it's now the future, it's time to make the head. I've now been making sculptures on YouTube for a little over three years and perhaps the most important thing I've learned is that if something is detailed and important, I should be making that first. I don't necessarily burn out while I'm sculpting, but I definitely start cutting corners and accepting subpar results as the project progresses past the initial 30 to 35 minutes of work. It's not that I have a short attention span, it's oh, a butterfly. Now up until this point I've got a small ball of fleshy clay and smooshed it onto a wire wrapped around some aluminium foil into which I've poked some eyeballs, a dimpled chin, and some oversized cheeks. I can then smoosh a massively oversized nose into the center of his face which of course means I need to thicken up his chin and his neck in turn. I can then refine the shape of his mouth before moving on to the enlittening of the eyes. I'll pop some little sausages of clay around his eyeballs building up a couple layers since I want this Mario to be a well-worn old man with heavy bags and wrinkles. Apparently Mario as we know him is in his mid-twenties but I figured this version is the Mario that's been trapped in a monster infected hellscape for years subsisting on little more than bananas and magic mushrooms. To make his facial hair, I'll stab his face with a nylon brush to create some stubble before pressing his patented flavor saver into place and adding some big bushy eyebrows up top. Finally, after everything's been in place, I decided that his jawline was a bit too pronounced so I'll cut it back substantially which I think was definitely the right choice. You never really know until you do it and there's no undo button when sculpting so I'm glad it worked out this time. Last but not least, I'll smoosh some big old hearing hoops onto the side of his head and bulk out his neck a tiny bit, then it's into the oven to lock it all in place before pressing it into my big jolly red body and pushing the red clay up and around his neck to create his shirt's neck hole. I'll then pat out his chest so he's a bit more muscly before bending his right arm up and into the final fist up, pipe on shoulder heroic pose. Before I add the rest of his shirt though, I want to get his forearms in place since what's more rugged and realistic than a rolled up sleeve. Of course to make the sleeves look rolled up, I need to really wrinkle the rest of his arm so it's onto the unwrinkling process which involves adding lots of little wormy dealies the length of the sleeve wherever I think a wrinkle would lie. I can then smoosh and blend them in to remove the seams and create some relatively authentic looking wrinkles. The actual rolled up section of the sleeve is just a bunch of wormy dealies layered on top of one another and blended together in much the same way but slightly separated from the original sleeve. I'll then repeat these steps for the other arm as well as adding some little wrinkles and folds to his chest where his jumpsuit will oppress the fabric up, otherwise that's his red shirt finished but before I bake him I want to get his shoes done. These start as oblong blobs of brown clay smooshed onto the bottoms of his legs since that's usually where you'll find the foot. A little cutting and smoothing will get me an appropriately boot shaped shape that I can then poke and prod to add some minor details like a tongue and some shoelaces. To make the sole of the shoe I'll take Mario out of his block so I can lay some darker brown clay onto the base that I can then press his feet down onto, then some more cutting to remove the excess and I can add the heel and toe caps to finish these feet off. Now at this point I was trying to figure out what kind of base I wanted to make. I had visions of a defeated Bowser, but given the size of Bowser it would have to be like a severed limb or a decapitated cap and that felt a bit too gruesome for this particular build. Fortunately one of my beautiful patrons recommended I make him standing on Bowser's skull, which I think would be a super idea. I like the idea of Bowser being ridiculously big in comparison to our otherwise tiny hero so I need to make this skull extra large. Also it's a skull. So it needs to be hollow which is why I'm making such an oversized aluminium skull armature. 
By building it out of gently pressed aluminium foil, I can build up the clay on top since it's sturdy enough to hold its shape, but soft enough to yank it out later when I want to hollow out my skull. For now though, I'll build the general Bowser skull shape on top, adding and removing clay until I've got the general shape I'm after. Originally, I was going to stick with the dry Bowser styled skull, but decided that if I want this to be a bit more realistic, then I ought to lean into a slightly more menacing look, so I'm going to go with a weird turtle T-Rex amalgamation. I also intentionally left the teeth out since I was going to bury the skull in some mud or dirt later and figured it would be a waste of time. I uh, ended up not doing that, so Bowser's skull is a bit more gummy than I had originally planned for, but at least there's a good reason. I changed my mind and I forgot to fix it. Once I've done the initial roller and hammer texturing, I can add some cranial sutures along the skull to break up the otherwise too smooth and singular shape of Bowser's skull before popping some big horns onto the backside. A final bit of texture with the roller will give them a nice rolly texture and I can smother the clay in a layer of cling film before breaking out my top tier bone texturing tool, a manky old toothbrush. I'll apply the texture by gently hammering the entire surface with the bristles. This will give the clay a nice porous appearance and the cling film will keep the bristles from catching and creating unsightly edges. Otherwise it's time to bake the skull. Once it's nice and hard, I can bring Mario back into the picture and use his extra long armature wire to let me know where to drill some holes so I can mount him in his victory pose on top of Bowser's skull. Of course, he's floating a little awkwardly, so I'll reposition his legs accordingly to bring both feet flat against the top of the skull. With that, I think he's looking pretty damn heroic, so I can pop him off, put him back on his block, and finish this skull. Now that I don't need the foil to fill the cavity, I can pull it out and set it aside for a future project. It does, of course, leave a pretty unsightly surface when it's removed, so I'll add a thin layer of clay to the inside of the skull and texture it with my toothbrush so it matches the outside, then it's into the oven for a final bake. Once it's been cooled, I can start hacking at the head to add a plethora of battle damage. This is always one of my favorite parts of any project since battle damage goes a long way to telling a story in an otherwise static scene, and it gives me a chance to smash up parts that look weird, thereby hiding my mistakes in a natural, intentional way. After all, the real secret to success is learning to hide your inadequacies. Or nepotism. Mostly nepotism. With my skull adequately smashed up, I can start adding some color. I'll start by giving the entire thing a nice white base coat. Once it's had a chance to dry, I'll then give the entire surface a thin bone white wash applied through the airbrush, since that will lessen the amount of visible brush strokes. I'll follow the bone white with a little yellowing before hitting the majority of the base with some thin coats of slightly whiter whites. This will give my bones some color variation which should work well with my next wash, which is a very dark, dirty brown applied liberally over the entire surface, then dabbed away before it's allowed to dry. This stains the surface while leaving behind darker recesses. Finally, I'll spritz some isopropyl alcohol through a mister, then dab at it again with my dirty paper towel, which will create some terrific looking pitting. You could of course leave it here and be happy, but I want my bone to be a little brighter, so I'll use a sponge to build up a couple layers of white along the surface. The sponge will color the raised sections while leaving the recesses nice and dark. Finally, a final sponging with a very coarse sponge will add some final brighter spots and some extra textures, and that's my skull finished, which means it's time to get back to Mario. Mario's been off to the side for some time without any pants, so I'll fix that by building up a thick layer of blue clay. I'll have to be a little strategic in the enlegging process, since the bent armature means his body's in a little bit of a wacky looking pose, but I'll do a little pinching and bulking in the right areas to get everything looking correct. Once I've pressed his pants up to his pecs, I can smooth the blue out in preparation of adding the ever-important blue jean texturing. And of course to do that, I'm gonna need a swatch of blue jean texture. Fortunately, when I made my reverse centaur, I made sure to keep that bit of blue jean since I'm not one to waste material. I like to add the texture early, even though I'm going to be going over it a whole lot since it's easier to retexture new clay rather than try and reach the hard to reach places later. With my body texturized, I can start adding the seams, stopping at the rear to add the shoulder straps, then continuing on until all the necessary parts have been seamed. I'll then add his little front pocket with a couple little front pocket front pockets before popping some butt cheek pockets in place. With all the pockets placed, I can finally start the enwrinkling of the legs, which is functionally identical to the enwrinkling of the sleeves, but blue. Now, with the wrinkles looking wrinkly, I'll texturate the new clay, then finally move up to cover that bald head. Some thin sheets of brown clay can get pressed into place to create the friar tuck bald spot onto which I will press a big blob of red clay, which 
One shaped into the correct shape will be his hat. I'll add a fancy little rim to the front and a little flat white patch to the middle and add some final texture to his hair. Then it's into the oven to bake so I can add the first layer of paint. Much like I do when I'm adding texture, I like to paint before adding subsequent layers since there are usually hard to reach places that are not conducive to a painter with shaky hands. This way I can paint the larger surfaces with abandon since I don't need to worry about accidentally painting a leather pouch blue or a green pipe red. Additionally, if I do go a little overboard at this stage since I'm using colored clay, a little isopropyl alcohol will remove the offending overpainting without peeling back any primer. As for what I'm doing and why, I've repainted the reds red and the blues blue, then using progressively lighter shades of each, I'll aggressively dry brush to highlight all the texture and sharper details of the wrinkles and make everything look well worn. With the base coat coloring done, I can start adding his assortment of accessories. My first idea was to cover him in all sorts of bits and bobs and battle trophies, and even give him a big flowing yellow cape. Instead of that though, I decided to keep things relatively simple and just enhance what's already a pretty perfect aesthetic. I think Mario's blue overall and red shirt and hat combo is damn near perfect character design and I don't want to bastardize it too much. Also, I, I ran out of time. I did however have time to make a tiny red monkey wrench and in lieu of a yellow cape, a tiny little feather that once consumed will produce said cape. Mario is also going to need some extra pouches for his various coins as well, so I strap some little baggies to the side of his ill-fitting belt, and it's time to make some hands. Now when it comes to making hands, I have a method, and I can confidently say, it's fine. Basically, I get my little blob of clay and cut it in half, thus ensuring both my hands are the same size. I'll then snip some sausages into the front of one hand, then lots of twisting and pinching will prolong those sausages into fingers, at which point I can add a thumb to one side, before thickening up the various pads and smoothing and blending it all together. To attach the hands to the arms, I'll smoosh a little blob of white clay out of the stumps so I have a sticky surface to stick my hands onto. Naturally, I've deformed the delicate little hands with my indelicate big hands, so I'll have to clean it up a little bit. Pro tip, when you're attaching your hand, make sure you don't put them on backwards. Otherwise, once they're in place on their respective arm nubs, they're a little easier to handle. So this is where I do most of my refining and detailing. Most, of course, being the operative word since it's not like I'm fussed with much detail anyway since Mario's wearing white gloves so I don't have to worry about fingernails or wonky knuckles or veins or anything like that. What I will worry about though is making sure my pipe is a pipe. To make my pipe a pipe, I'm going to wrap this little wooden dowel in a thin sheet of green clay and cut it to size. I'll add the little ends to each of the ends, then I can bake it in the oven and pop it off the dowel, which it should do fairly easily since clay doesn't adhere to wood. And with the dowel removed, I've got a cracking little pipe. Cracking pipe is probably not the best term for this. A little rough work with some sanding files will scuff the body of my pipe up so it looks well used and I'll paint it with a metallic green so it looks metallic and green and then a black wash will help to highlight the nicks and gouges as well as bring the camera back into focus. Then once the wash is dried I can fit it into Mario's waiting hand and fold his thumb and fingers around the shaft in a relaxed yet menacing posture. Finally, I figured what's a Mario sculpture without a mushroom, so I made him a limp-looking red-capped magic mushroom to fit into his left hand. All that's left to do then is paint the last little accessories. I'll give his leather belt an initial brown wash followed by a lighter messy brush over top, then a darker coat for the middle bits, before adding some final cuts and cracks with a lighter, almost yellow khaki color. The gold buttons will get a gold base coat followed by a brown wash to warm them up and I'll give his gloves an initial dirty grey wash followed by some whites to bring the white back to the larger area. His hair will get a dark brown wash to add a bit of recessed shading and his mustache will get a darker brown wash with some black highlights to keep those Mario enthusiasts from kicking down my door. To add some weathering to his face, I'll paint the creases with some red and brownish red washes, then feather it away with a soft dry brush to keep the lines from being too harsh. I also gave him a dirty 5 o'clock shadow, but I guess I didn't press record on my camera since it's the end of the week and my brain is mush. I did, however, remember to record me painting his eyeballs, which I wanted to make extra big and extra blue. Finally, a couple little white dots will give his eyes a surprising amount of life, and I can add the little red M to his hat so you don't forget who this is. It's me, Mario. And last but not least, a little UV resin on top of his eyeballs will make him nice and shiny, and that's Mario finally finished and, dare I say, looking pretty terrific. I can pop him off his block and finally fit him on his defeated enemy's lifeless skull. 
I realized he was looking a little too clean, so before I call this one good, I'll give him a dirty dusting with some brown pigment powders that I can then lock in place with a thin coat of matte varnish. Also, his arms are too soft, so using an extra thin brush dipped in a very thin brown paint will add some manly forearm hair. And with that, we're all done here and on to the glamour shots. As always, a big old thank you to the wonderful patrons of Patreon who support this weird little channel and a special hey how are you to the newest of them, Ruthless Cutie and Luna, Nicole Warner, Lady in the Radiator, Pastor Paisley, Fenris, Christine Grace, Rain Stevenson, Ugly Cupcake, Vivian Evans, Starlight Strive, Strawberry Squid, Connor D. Ninja and Theo D. Baby, Kane Belmont, Caroline Simpson, Mongo1911, James Tice, Charlotte S., Honest Jabe, The Better Brandon, Megan Dare, Justin Rugg, and Gallus Rhymes with Phallus. You are the advertiser-friendly skull upon which this monster-slaying plumber of a channel stands. Happy Friday, I guess, since today is technically not Mario Day, unless you're watching it on Mario Day, in which case this better be your second viewing, otherwise I'm going to be very disappointed. Anyways, we'll um, see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>